The hard part of this problem is setting it up. So if we're having trouble setting it up and we've got a lot of things going on, let's just make a big table. We're going to have a row for noodles and a row for rice. First thing we need to talk about is how many people had each. Well, we don't know. Since we're looking for how many people had noodles, we're just going to say that x people had noodles. Now if there's 20 people and x of them have noodles, how many have rice? Well, the rest of them. All 20 people minus whoever had noodles. That's how many people will have rice. Think about it. If 5 people have noodles, then 20 minus 5 or 15 will have the rice. So now that we know how many people, or at least how we're going to say how many people ate each food, we've got to look at the total price of each. If you've got X people that eat noodles, and noodles cost $6 each, how much total money did you spend on noodles? Well, you spent 6 times X dollars. How much total money got spent on rice? Well, that'd be the price of rice times how many times you bought rice, which is that 20 minus x. And that is almost to our starting equation. Then we just have to know our total bill, that $112. What is that? Well, that's the money spent on noodles plus all the money spent on rice. That gives us our total bill on this problem. So that's our starting equation, and now we have to solve that. So now that we've got our equation, let's start solving it. First thing we can do is deal with these parentheses. When you have a number right outside parentheses, that means it is time to distribute. It means we multiply by each term inside. 4 times 20 is 80. 4 times minus x is minus 4x. The other pieces stay the same. Now we have 6x plus 80 minus 4x all on the left side. So we can combine like terms. We've got these 6x's and those minus 4x's. They're both on the left side, so we'll just go straight across. What is 6 minus 4? That's 2. We've got 2x, and the plus 80 stays the same, so does the 112. All right, getting closer. Now we want to get x by itself. Next step, we need to get rid of this 80. We're going to subtract 80 on both sides. 80 minus 80 cancels out. 2x comes down. 112 minus 80 ends up being 32. 2x equals 32. We divide by 2. We have x equals 16. 16 people had noodles for lunch. And that is our answer. If a quadratic has two and negative four solutions, what does that mean? Well, that means x could equal two, or x could equal negative four. And from here, we're basically going to go through the steps to solve a quadratic equation, but do it backwards. So if you've got x equals two, that's the same as having x minus two is equal to zero. If you have x equals negative four, that's the same as, let's see, add that four over. That's the same as x plus 4 is equal to 0. So if you have something equals 0 or something else equals 0, that's the same as just having them multiplied together and still equaling 0. And then from there, this should be looking a little bit more familiar now, we're just going to go and FOIL this out. And to FOIL it out, you can do your first outside, inside, last or I just make a big old box and do it. We've got x minus 2 and x plus 4. x times x is x squared. x times minus 2 is minus 2x. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times minus 2 is minus 8. So we have x squared. 4x and minus 2x, well, 4 minus 2 is plus 2x, and then minus 8. All that is equal to 0, and that's what we're looking for. This is a quadratic that when you solved it, you would get 2 and negative 4 as solutions. We basically just did the factoring and everything backwards on this problem.
any time a problem asks for a y-intercept, that means that x is equal to 0, and they want to know what y is. So all we have to do with this problem is plug in 0 for x. So we have 3, 0 plus 2, 0 minus 1. 0 plus 2 is 2. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. The 3 stays there. 3 times 2 is 6. And 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. The y-intercept is negative 6. Factor x to the fourth minus 81. For this problem, we need to remember the difference of squares formula. That formula goes like this. If you have something squared minus something else squared, that factors to be the original things added together times the original thing subtracted. So the first step on this one is to take the square roots of these things. Square root of x to the fourth is going to be x to the second. x squared times x squared gives you a total of 4x's. Square root of 81 is going to be 9. 9 times 9 is 81. So that's my a and that's my b in this formula. So x to the fourth minus 81 is x squared plus 9 times x squared minus 9. But then we're not done yet. Turns out x squared minus 9, we can use the same formula again because we're subtracting and both of these are perfect squares that have nice happy square roots. The square root of that first piece, the x squared, would be plain old x, and the square root of 9 would be 3. So really, x to the fourth minus 81, that's going to equal this part stays the same. We still have x squared plus 9. There are no special formulas for a square plus a square. That just stays how it is. And then here, my a, my first piece of square root is x, plus my b, my second piece of square root is 3 times a minus b, or here x minus 3. And this is the fully factored form of that. On this problem, we've got a lot of things in parentheses all raised to the power 4. As long as this is all multiplying and dividing in here, there's no adding, no subtracting. We just give each piece its own power of 4. So we've got 3 to the power of 4, we've got x to the 10 to the 4, and we've got y to the 2.2 to the 4. 3 to the 4 is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 3 and 3 is 9, and 9 and 9 is 81. x to the 10 to the 4, when you have a power to a power like that, you multiply. 10 times 4 is 40. And if you have a decimal or a fraction, same thing, same rule. Power to a power, you multiply. 2.2 .2 times 4 is 8.8. .8. And that is your answer. 81, x to the 40, y to the 8.8. .8. For this problem, we need to remember what gets rid of a square root. And it turns out the opposite of a square root is a square, a power of 2. Square and square root cancel out, just leaving x minus 6 on the left side. And of course, whatever you do on the left side, you need to also do on the right side. 6 squared, 6 times 6, is 36. And from here, it should start looking a lot more manageable. So to get x by itself, we need to get rid of that 6. We subtract 6 on both sides. Gives us negative x equals 30. Now if we have negative x, there's nothing wrong with that, but we're not done yet. We need to get rid of that negative. We do that by dividing by negative 1. Negative divided by negative is positive x. Positive divided by negative is negative. x equals negative 30, and that's our answer.